Chryso friends, welcome back to Opus LNI, where we have a new pattern coming out soon. Last year, you may remember, I released the Londinium hood pattern, and I always had it in my head to release a dagging expansion pack for it, and now I am so close to being finished with it. If you're not familiar, dagging is the little extra bits of fabric left on the hems of garments that are cut into repeating decorative shapes. Dagging was a popular embellishment all through the medieval period, and we have manuscripts, funerary brasses, and sculptures that show them decorating the hems of gowns, sleeves, hoods, and more. So for my expansion pack, I've created sets of five different dagging shapes that are designed to fit on the existing hood pieces, and they can be made unlined from lightly felted or fulled wool, and those shapes won't ravel or fray when you cut them. Or you can make a lined hood and like, line all of the individual dags, which takes way longer, but that's what we're gonna do today. Stick around after the video for details on the pattern release date and the Discord sew along. And now everyone go grab your cuppa. It is finally fall, and that means that I can break out my autumnal flavors. Today I am drinking Necromancer by The Weeping Glass, and I know I had some of this on a recent video, but the fall flavors and mulling spices are back in stock. So I just made an order, and I got it, and I'm so excited about it, and now I'm gonna make that everyone else's problem. It is a black tea with maple and vanilla, and it makes the best tea latte. Let's get into it. First of all, I need to print out the pattern pieces and make sure they tape together properly. Then I'll cut out the pattern pieces and attach them to the bottom of my Lindinium hood pieces. The nice thing about using this yellow's painter's tape is that it's totally removable. I made five different shapes with different levels of difficulty and I chose the escutcheon or shield shape since that's the one right in the middle. After all of my pattern pieces are assembled, I can start marking and cutting the fabrics. This particular dagging extension is actually a bit too long to go on the fabric folded in half lengthwise, so I will have to adjust my pattern layout diagrams. But for this one, I just adjusted it from the top knowing that I have enough play and the hood opening to absorb it. The DAG expansion is a bit different from the base hood pattern in that there are no seam allowances included on the dagging, so the lines that are traced on the fabric will be the stitching lines. This will allow the DAGs to be precisely sewn. I'm using two different color pens and markers on each section to indicate which areas have seam allowances included and which parts don't. As you see, when I'm cutting out the fabric pieces, I'm cutting completely around the dags, leaving that whole section intact to protect from fraying. Then I need to make sure the dags are traced onto the other fabric piece as well. And when the linen lining is done, it's time to do it all over with the wool.
Once all the pattern pieces are cut out and the gusset slit is marked, I'm going to proceed as I usually do. That is inserting the gore with my usual not at all trademarked patent not pending technique. If you're interested in a more in-depth tutorial on how I insert gores into fabric like this, I will put the link in a card in the corner and also the description below. If you're watching this in semi real time, I'm also teaching a class on how to do this at the Tournament of Defense this November. Details and registration info will be in the description as well.
I always fell the seams of my hoods to prevent them from fraying and to reinforce things. This is usually the most time consuming step of making a hood, but this time, yeah, it wasn't this time. Up until now, things have been pretty standard as far as making a hood, but here is where we will start to deviate, the dags. I have marked the outline of the dags on both fabrics and I will use a pin to match up the points of the shield on each and then pin the in-between points. Next, it's time to sew. This was, I'm not gonna lie, this was fiddly to sew on a machine. I would say this is about as complicated a dagging pattern as I'd feel comfortable sewing on a machine with a regular sewing foot. If you're a person who has experience sewing with a darning or quilting foot, I'd recommend using that for the trifolium or oak leaf versions. Other options would be to sew these patterns by hand or to make a hood from fold wool that won't fray and then not line the dags at all. Thank you to all of my current and continuing Kofi members. Your support and the support of all of my members and croissants makes it easier to do what I do and to provide quality content for everyone. Thank you so much. Stick around after this brief commercial break for the finishing touches and reveal. Once the dags are sewn and I picked up all of the pins that jumped out of the hood whilst I was sewing, I can cut away the excess fabric around the dags. And after that, I spent like two hours clipping the seam allowances.
On the parts that curve out, I'm cutting notches out of the seam allowances, and on the parts that curve in, I'm just cutting little slits. This is because when I turn the hood right side out, those curves will go the other way, and the seam allowances will compress or spread accordingly, and this just allows the seam allowances to do those things without having wrinkles or overlapping itself. I'm turning the hood right side out through the opening at the face, then I will use a tool called a bone folder to help turn all the dags right side out. It's actually used in bookmaking and other paper crafts for getting crisp folds, but I'll be using the gentle point to turn out the corners on the shield shapes without poking through. Everything looks puffy, but we're about to fix that. This is where a really good iron comes in handy. It doesn't seem like it should make that much of a difference, but let me tell you, I thought I was going to have to top stitch these dags to get them to lay flat, but after a good steam press, everything was so crisp and flat, I didn't end up having to.
Lastly, I'll press the seam allowances for the face opening and then slip stitch that shut. And we're done.
Thank you all for joining me today. I am so, so happy with the way this hood came out, and I'm excited to see what everyone else does with this pattern, which will be for sale on my Kofi shop on the 1st of November, just like the Londinium hood was last year. And just like the hood pattern, it will be pay what you want starting at $7. If you are interested in doing a Londinium hood sew along with or without the DAGs, come join my Discord server where we will be making them together. And there might even be prizes. If you enjoyed this video, be sure to like and subscribe and click the bell if you want. YouTube has been pretty sporadic with sending notifications, so no guarantees. If you're interested in finding me on social media, I am at Opus LNI everywhere, and the links will all be in the description box. I'll also post the link to my Kofi where you can leave a one-time tip, browse my web shop, or join the membership tiers for an additional content and a personal thank you of your very own in my next video. Until next time, be kind, do the work, continue supporting marginalized people, and keep creating. Huil!